Hi, I'm Professor Seth Chandler from the University of Houston Law Center, and this video is part of a series of videos for the course Analytic Methods for Lawyers. This video is on bad graphics, and it may be somewhat more fun than some of the drier material that we've covered thus far. But uh, a good lawyer needs to be able to prevent confusing graphics or misleading graphics from uh, being used by adversaries. Because just as there are lots of ways to write poorly or write in the things that are misleading, so too with visual information. You can present visual information in a confusing fashion, and you can also attempt to mislead with visualizations. And so what I want to do here is to look at graphics that have aesthetic problems, graphics that mislead, and perhaps some occasions on which we have pretty artsy graphics that actually function well. Let's start with graphics with aesthetic problems. And one uh, problem is a needlessly high data to ink ratio. Let's look at this graphic from Reuters. Um, so we have this ink here. It's not exactly clear what the purpose of this is. Um, and uh, that seems like a waste. The other thing that's bizarre is the reverse scaling on the y-axis, like occasionally you might want to have a reverse scaling. I take it maybe the idea is that uh, we reach this high point of low number of gun deaths, and then once we enacted the stand your ground law, the number of gun deaths went, oh, not down, even though it's going down, the number of gun deaths went up. So this is a pretty dreadful graphic on a variety of scores, aesthetics, and confusion. Let's look at another one. Let's, this one has um, lots of uh, gradient colors where we're moving in our shades from light purple to darker purple, or uh, here we have, it seems like a radial gradient, where here it's the lightest blue and it goes out, and there seems to be absolutely no point to the color system of this graphic. And so I would describe this as just aesthetic glop, where we have needless complication. There's no reason, just because Illustrator or some Photoshop or something has a gradient function, to use it. Then we have just pure idiocy. And um, Edward Tuft, as I think I mentioned in uh, what the bonus video, is sort of probably the leading scholar on the presentation of visual information. And um, Professor Tuft has called this the worst graphic ever made. And um, he might be right. Let's look at it. I may have to shrink it, which will further reveal issues, in order for it to fit. Ah, I see, that didn't actually help because the graphic stayed the same size. So unfortunately, we're going to have to look at this in a scrolling fashion, but part of the problem with the graphic is its bad um, aspect ratio. So although it's a little hard to read, on the y-axis we have percent of total enrollment, and um, here, this line here, I believe, attempts to denote the percentage of college enrollment that is under age 25. What the role of this pseudo and bad three-dimensional perspective here is, creating this green glop that seem, makes you think that maybe there's some other line going on is unclear. Moreover, why we are filling in the area above the curve with yellow is mysterious. Um, and OK, so that's the age structure of people under 25. And you might think, well, OK, so everyone else must be over 25. And so you'd kind of want to just show how the breakdown goes. But no, we have this gap in which we're now going. This is unbelievably bad. I'm just looking at it again, and I've forgotten how awful this is. We have this. Um, other line showing the percentage that's under uh, over 25, again with the ridiculous pseudo 3D perspectiving here that's totally confusing, and why we have this this gap in between is completely mysterious. So uh, I have no idea what the point of this graphic was. 
but I do think it, it Professor Tuff's designation of this as the worst graphic ever made may well be warranted. Then we have what Professor Tuft calls chart junk. Here is the bad way to present it, in which the size of the dollar reflects the minimum wage. And is it the area of the dollar? Is it the length of the dollar? And really, people are not great at comparing areas. And so it's pretty unclear to me why we want to use the area of a rectangle to present information. Yes, it's a little bit cute that you're showing it with dollars, but cuteness doesn't last very long in the graphics business. Uh, and here is a much simpler presentation that shows the same information, where on the x-axis we have clearly labeled time frames, and on the y-axis we have a clearly labeled dollar values. The graphic has a plot label with it. And so by getting rid of chart junk, we can actually present the information much more clearly. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, actually I have some additional examples of bad graphics. So here's one uh, in which it's basically a bar chart about how many speakers there are in the world, but instead of having nice simple labeled bars, we have these elaborate things with little thought balloons in them and then we have this completely mysterious fill-in stuff here. Moreover, perhaps they were spending so much time developing their fill-ins that we have 1,026 billion speakers, which is the same as a trillion speakers, and that clearly isn't right. Okay, but there's more. Here is the Florida Department of Health uh, COVID cases, uh, at least as shown on TV. And you'll notice the very interesting scaling system here in which the higher the total number of cases, the lower the bar. And we have different colors for no particular reason. So another classic. Uh, here's one, uh, which is, um, you tell me what this means. Um, like, what do these internal things mean? Uh, honestly, I could look at this for a long time and I have no clue what this is about. So, an unlabeled graphic with, it's some sort of elaborate sector chart, but also the numbers, here, I'm looking at this more, the numbers don't seem to have any relationship to the size of the sector. So, awful. Okay, uh, we're back in cutesy pooville in which we have the icon for the um, fast food outlet. Some, I guess it's the height of the icon that is uh, supposed to represent the sales. Um, again, you know, do I really need to know what the Wendy's icon looks like in order to understand this? And I would say the answer is no. Um, we have this lurking scaling function on, with a, a, a shape outline of Afghanistan, which is fascinating. You know, if that was really important to understand the relationship of Burger King scales, Burger King sales to the GDP of Afghanistan, seems like they could have put a little marker here, maybe had a a horizontal line, but just having this cut in and then an irrelevant image as to the shape of Afghanistan really doesn't do a lot for me. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, here we have a chart that has the 50 states whether they voted for Romney, and I guess this is the 2016 election, or Obama, no, 2012, 2012 election. Um, and then we're going to try to correlate that with the gun laws that they had um, with some special reference to Virginia. And... Um, 
I, and this graphic is just unfathomable. I cannot tell you what it's trying to approve, which is too bad because someone obviously put a good deal of thought into making this. Uh, so not a good effort at a 50 state survey. All right, here is another one. Um, so, oh, this is good stuff. So we hear, what is the scaling system that's used? We have 0% with some sort of positive uh, notation, and then we have 2.4% being this height here. But here, the same height is 0.4%, and here, the same height is 29.4%. And I guess this is comparing, um, why do we even have, um, oh, this is actual versus perceived. OK, so it's unlabeled until you actually read it here. So uh, another completely dreadful graphic. I won't take up too much more of your time on this stuff, but here we have things that shouldn't even be graphics at all. Here's one on the drinking age in the different Canadian provinces. And we have things like 18.2, 18.8, 19.4, the scaling appears to be every 0.6 years, which makes absolutely no sense, of course, because there are only integer values of what the drinking age is in the various provinces. Uh, this shouldn't be a, a, a graphic at all. It's just a list. Alberta, Manitoba, and Quebec have drinking ages of 18, and all the other provinces have drinking ages of 19. The end. All right, here's a classic. Uh, you might say, well, it's just an empty graph, but no, you see these little circles here? These are showing the susceptibility of something or other to something, but they're all the same value. So it's not clear to me what information is being offered by this graph. I guess we're back in the cutesy poo uh, domain here where we're using traditional abbreviations for the city. This is like a faceted pi graph, I guess, except that the pi has been stretched in some topological miracle so that it fills in the letters of the city and, you know, just trying to compare the Houston uh, walk to work percentage with the Chicago walk to work percentage, uh, it's really extremely difficult to make any sort of comparisons here. So this is uh, garbage. So excessive ink and cuteness is not very helpful in presentation of information, uh, but there's something that's probably worse, which is graphics that are genuinely misleading. Although actually, I think some of the ones we saw above are pretty misleading too. Uh, so here's one. Here is a pie chart of support for various presidential candidates in 2012. And we've got a pie chart in which um, the numbers um, I guess you could answer, you know, more than one person. Yes, I back Pale, Sarah Palin and I back Mitt Romney. Uh, but we have these numbers and you add them up and of course they don't come anywhere near summing to one. And perhaps the size, uh, the size of the slice has some bearing on the numeric value, although eyeballing it, it doesn't look to me as if the 70 is bigger than the 60. So a crazy uh, chart. All right, here's one um, in which we have what's called the problem of truncated scaling. And this is a pretty significant problem. So you look at this graphic and you think, oh my goodness, there's been this enormous growth in the number of people receiving welfare. Look, it's gone from this size of a bar to this size of a bar. But the issue is, if you look, they have cut off 0 to 94 million. And so you've exaggerated, in some sense, the size of the increase. That is, the visual growth does not correspond with the numeric growth. And so this is a classic way of making data look different than it might otherwise look. Now, I'm not saying this is always terrible or always wrong. It depends what you're trying to establish. You know, if you want to say, hey, there have been small but significant increases in the um, number of people receiving welfare, and rather than 
uh, having a scale that goes from zero to 108 million on which the small increases won't really show up. I'm going to blow it up, but you need some candor in what you're doing and presenting it this way is potentially quite misleading. All right, here's, oh, this is another good one. It's the same thing with a truncated scale where, um, you know, look at how the huge increase in the tax rate that's going to occur if the Bush tax cuts expire. And so, it, you know, it's going to go from 35% to 39.6%, which is a non-trivial increase, particularly if you're paying it. But on the other hand, it makes it look as if your taxes are going to quadruple if those Bush tax cuts expire. All right, here's another truncated scale um, of the percent who agreed with the court. And, you know, the, the difference is, there's a difference, 54 versus 62%. But they've made it look as if there's some really significant difference here, whereas in fact the difference to my eyes would appear to be quite modest. So here we see this steady increase and it goes up and then it goes up some more, but then it goes back down and then it goes up again, etc. But if you look at the gaps between the uh, horizontal lines here, there's a gap of 30, a gap of 30, now there's a gap of 10, back to 30, back to 30, back to 30, now 50, now 10, now 50, now 50. You can't have this sort of irregular scaling without, you know, clearly not notifying the reader, the user, of what's going on. And I have no idea what reason was used for this. Maybe they were trying to keep the aspect ratio of the graphic reasonable. But there are far better ways of doing this. Probably a simple linear scale as you went from 30 to 400 would have worked splendidly for Fox 31, but instead some intern concocted this monstrosity. Or here's another one. Here what we have is the nonlinearity is in the X value. So here we have like, what is it? A nine month difference. Here we have a six month difference. And here we have about a 14 or 15 month difference. But they're all the same, so it looks linear, um, but in fact, it's not a linear change. And so, uh, uh, again, that is a pretty misleading graphic on what's going on with job losses during this time period. Thank you, Fox News. All right, here's a more realistic way of depicting the same information. And um, I, I don't know why it wasn't done this way. It seems like it people would be capable of coping with the fact that it was slightly nonlinear in the job losses. All right, so let's look at um, another um, issue in graphics. This one's kind of the problems of spurious conspiracies in which you have, ooh, look, here's the 5G coverage as of this period of time, and here's Subway Sandwich Shop locations, and here are Ku Klux Klan uh, outfits, and here are dogs with heartworm, and here is uh, McDonald's locations, and they're all showing the same thing. Um, and, and the reason they're mostly showing the same thing is presumably all of these things are roughly correlated with population, and lots of people live east of the Mississippi, and not so many people live west of the Mississippi except on the coast. And of course, the very important third coast. Um, so beware of graphics that show um, spurious correlations. Um, here, we have a misuse of perspective in fake 3D graphics, right? There's no reason for this to be 3D. And by having this pull out, item C is kind of made to look a lot bigger than it is, and item A is made to look smaller than it really is. So I have no idea why one would be rotating the three-dimensional pie this way. It just simply is misleading. Um, Let's look at this one um, here. Right, you can't tell in this graphic if the correct value is, or it's very difficult to tell, is, like for this point, is this correct value 37,000, which is where the front face of this cuboid is, or is it the back value 
where maybe 39,000. Now I guess because these lines are bent, you're supposed to use the back value, but it's just needlessly complicated, and I don't know why it was done that way. Here's one courtesy of USA Today. We have some sort of bar graph, and it's tipped on its side, maybe not the worst thing, and we have this fascinating crutch icon here. Um, but what are these numbers? Is this 5.2% of what? Spinal injuries are 5.2% of what? Of traumatic injuries or traumatic injuries for which children are hospitalized? Uh, is there, these don't, numbers don't add to 100%, so is there some other category? So when you use a percentage, make sure it's clear percentage of what? All right, here's one from the University of Houston website. On uh, positive cases versus cases on campus, during this time period, and are these new cases? What what are we actually measuring? Are these cases, uh, I guess it can't be cumulative because it goes down, but it's just quite confusing what they're actually seeking to measure here. Plus, how do they know how many positive cases are off campus? All right, then we have um, comparisons that probably don't make a lot of sense. We have, um, it makes it appear as if, you know, uh, if higher education is a very poor return. After all, the four-year degree is costing $95,000 and you're only making $45,000. So that seems like a bad investment. And maybe relative to what it was in 1979, for example, it is a uh, not as good an investment, but the issue isn't what you make in this year, it's what you make over some longer period of time. It's an investment. And so comparing it to your annual salary is not very good, plus what you really want to be looking at is the marginal costs, right? You want to look at the marginal cost of tuition, room, and board versus the marginal change in income that results from getting a college education. So. Uh, while we don't have problems, we do actually have truncated scale here, don't we? We have a truncated scale, and then we have just a misleading comparison that's manifesting itself in a graphic. Here's another graphic. Maybe it doesn't belong in the misleading category. Maybe it just belongs in the bad category, uh, where we're trying to show the relationship between violent crime rates and rates of killing by the police in America's 50 largest cities during this five-year period. All right, so that's a legitimate inquiry. Um, but wouldn't it be better to just have a traditional scatter plot with, you know, violent crime rates on the x-axis and killings by police on the y-axis? And I understand how you want to know which city it is, but you could label the cities. Now, it might be a little tight given that we have 50 points, but at least you'd see then that I, I think the story that might be told from this graphic is there's not much of a relationship between the two, which may be troubling to some people. Um, but presenting it this way rather than as a traditional XY scatter plot seems needlessly complicating here. All right, so I've been sort of anti cutesy poo. Let me show you some graphics that I think do work that are non traditional. So here's one looking at. Um, injuries of football players. And we're trying to sort of align, we have a bubble chart. It's like a geo bubble chart in some sense, in which the geography though isn't the geography of the world, it's the geography of the person. And I think this basically works, right? Uh, you know, looking at knees and ankles, you can see those are big problems, less so the core and the back. And then we have these breakdowns in some of the bigger categories where we might want to know what particular muscle was involved or what part of the hand was involved. So I actually think that's a, a decent graphic courtesy of the Wall Street Journal. Um, here is what Edward Tuft, our friend, uh, says is one of the best graphics ever made. And the idea is to sort of integrate information about the size of Napoleon's army to the um, time and to his location as Napoleon foolishly tries to invade 
Russia in winter, and you can see sort of both the paths taken by his army and the ever-shrinking size as it finally makes its way to Moscow, where he gives up and, you know, basically nobody gets back. Uh, so um, this is, I think, a non-traditional but clever use of graphics. So if you want to learn more, here are some links on good graphics, bad graphics, but really do think about your presentation of graphical information. Don't be my next example and enjoy the opportunity to present information visually.